Okay, so I've added my levels here. I'm going to zoom in on this just a little bit more. And I've got elevation lines here that have corresponding elevation numbers. Everything is related back to zero. When I started drawing, I was on level one, which is at zero. And so what I have now is a level two at six feet, a level three at nine foot two, and then a roof at its original elevation of 12 foot eight. So I need to rearrange those some because obviously I need more space um, to actually have floors and things like that. So what I could do is just grab a level line and drag it up and move that roof up to 32 or 33 or whatever I want. Um, but that's not very scientific. So what I'm going to do instead is click on the roof line to select it and then click on the elevation number, uh, which in this case I've, I've slid this one up to where it's 30, 31 feet 8 inches. I'm going to click on that number and then I can edit that number and I'm going to make this 36 feet. My level 3, I want that one to be 24 feet, so I click on that number, make that 24. And then my level 2, I'm going to put that one at 12 feet, so I click on that elevation, enter 12, and the enter button, and I'm good. Notice that I don't have to enter the foot and inch marks in Revit. Revit automatically thinks in feet and inches, and so if I just enter the number 12, like I did for level 2, it assumes that I mean 12 feet. If I enter 12 and then a space and then a 6, it assumes that I mean 12 feet 6 inches. So I never have to use the foot and inch marks. Uh, we'll save you a little bit of time on your keyboard work. So notice what happened over here in my project browser. If I slide up here and I look at my floor plan views in my project browser, I now have level 1, 2, and 3. So those didn't exist before. All I had before was level 1. So now I've got all three levels and those um, were created as a result of me using this level tool up here in the datum pane to uh, create the levels. So the views come with them automatically. If I slide down a little bit, I can also see in ceiling plans, I've also got uh, level 1, 2, and 3. In the next part of this video, we're going to extend our walls up to where our walls are constrained to our roof level and um, take a look at how that might work. Okay, so now I've got my levels established. Now I want to make my building match up to my levels and make some sense. So if I click on one of my building walls here to select it, it turns blue. And notice over here in my properties dialog box, I've got some base constraints and top constraint commands. And so when I drew this wall, I was on the level one plan. So the base constraint here is level one, makes sense. And my top constraint is unconnected 14 feet. And if you go back, you can actually see where in the selector ribbon, you've got the opportunity to change this, but I didn't point that out at the time. Um, so when you're drawing walls in the commercial template, they default to be unconnected at the top and to have an unconnected height of 14 feet. In residential, it's different. They're unconnected and they have a default height of 20 feet. So it just depends on what template you're in as to what these are. But what I'm going to do instead is to go to the 3D view here and change my top constraint to the roof level. So I'm just going to go back up here to my um, quick access toolbar, click on 3D, there's that box, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit and recenter this. And I'm going to select one of these walls, and this time instead of having a top constraint of unconnected, I'm going to click at the right hand end of that little um, entry window and I can't really type things in there. All I can do is select levels that already exist. So I'm going to select up to level roof and click on that and notice that my wall just got taller. Let me show you a shortcut. I'm going to undo this. So I go up to my um, quick access toolbar up here and I click the undo button. Now if I just hover over that same wall and before I click to select it um, I'm hovering with my mouse, I click the tab button on my keyboard and that gives me that pre-select highlight, that, that light blue highlight around all the walls that are chained together.
if you go back to that selector ribbon from when you were creating walls, uh, one of the selections that's on there is the chain option, and that's what this is related to. And so these walls were all drawn kind of as one thing or one command. And so if I hover over one of them, I click the tab button on my keyboard, I get that pre-select highlight on all of them that are chained together, and then I do a left mouse click to actually select them. And so I move my mouse away, and now I can see that they've all turned that um, blue color that is is the selection indicator. And um, not a big deal if I only have four little walls here, but imagine a much more complex project where you've got walls and corners and this and that and the other going on. Um, being able to select all of them that are chained together might be a handy thing. So now I've got all four of them. Now I'm going to change this top constraint from unconnected to up to level roof. And so now they all went at, at one time. Let me show you one more and then we'll take a pause here. So if I undo that, I go back up to my shortcuts bar <clears throat> and click on the undo button. I'm going to do one of them again. So I select that uh, north wall and I change my top constraint to up to level roof. It does that one. And then what if I go to my Modify tab up here on my um, ribbon, Modify tab, and then I choose this Select, um, I'm sorry, I choose Match Type Properties, and I click on that command, and I click on that wall, and notice my little paintbrush filled. And so now, if I click on that one, and that one, and that one, it matches the type properties for me. And so now I can... Um, do it that way if I want to. That comes in handy as well. So now we'll take a little pause and let you catch up and we'll move on here in a minute.